On today's Exploring History podcast, I'll tell some of the reasons I'm especially thankful this Thanksgiving. Welcome to Exploring History with Ray Notgrass, a production of Notgrass History. I'm Ray Notgrass. Thanks for listening. My overall purpose for the Exploring History podcasts is to tell stories from history, to tell you about special people in history, and occasionally to offer some thoughts from the Bible. But I have a personal story this year at Thanksgiving, a testimony of God's faithfulness that I want to share with you. I hope it'll be encouraging to you. My purpose is not to focus on me, but to share the difficulties and blessings that have come into my life this year and to honor God for seeing me through. I will be talking a lot about health issues and using some medical terms, but I will try to be as clear as I can. First, a little background. I have known for several years that I had a leaky mitral valve in my heart, a valve that didn't quite close all the way when blood passed through. This resulted in a heart murmur. All the doctors who examined this said it was no big deal and that I should just keep an eye on it. Also, by way of background, Charlene and I had COVID-19 in July of 2022. Soon thereafter, I saw a pulmonologist who said I had some kind of problem in my lungs but she thought it was no big deal, and she said to come back in a year. After COVID, I was left with a lingering cough that continued through the rest of the year. But when our family gathered for Christmas in 2022, we were all healthy and seemed to have no problems. Then in January of 2023, I came down with pneumonia and spent a couple of nights in the hospital. I recovered but about a month later, my doctor heard a different heart murmur and referred me to a cardiologist. The cardiologist did some tests that revealed a severe leakage in the mitral valve, and he recommended surgery to repair it. A few weeks later, I met with a pulmonologist at Vanderbilt who diagnosed me with interstitial lung disease, a scarring in my lungs. He expressed concern about my lungs not being able to go through mitral valve surgery. He scheduled a PET scan. The scan indicated that I should not have mitral valve replacement surgery due to the condition of my lungs. So my doctors recommended instead that I have a mitral clip device inserted, which would improve the functioning of the valve and would be a much less invasive procedure. But in addition... The skull-to-thigh PET scan revealed something going on with my prostate, and the doctors recommended that I consult the urology department. I then had a PSA test, which revealed that my level was elevated, which was another indication that my prostate needed immediate attention. By now, it was the middle of May. Another PSA test a couple of months later was even higher, indicating the urgent need to make a treatment plan. But first, I had the heart valve issue to address. On July 25th of this year, I was scheduled to have the mitral clip procedure. On the evening before, when we were in an Airbnb apartment in Nashville, after a brief shower, we saw a rainbow in the sky. I love rainbows as God's evidence that He is watching over us. The day of the surgery, As I lay on the gurney before going into surgery, and as I was staring at the ceiling, I had the distinct impression that God was smiling on me. I don't ever remember having a thought like that before. Then I went into surgery. When I woke up, I learned that a miracle had taken place. Before the surgery, a test revealed that my mitral valve leak was torrential. That was the word that one of the surgery team used. The cardiologist inserted a catheter into my vein and used it to carry the clip to my heart. After cutting a hole in one chamber of my heart, the clip reached the mitral valve. But the cardiologist who performed the procedure told us later that when he prepared to attach the clip, the leak 
had disappeared. When he was telling us about it later in the recovery room, the cardiologist said something magic happened today. A nurse called it divine intervention. Another nurse said, there's something bigger than doctors at work here. The cardiologist who performed the procedure said that in seven years of doing this procedure, and he does about a hundred per year, he had never seen anything like it. An assisting physician who also had many years of experience said he also had never seen anything like it. As a result, the cardiologist did not insert the clip because he could see no reason to do so. He said that during the surgery, he tried for 30 minutes to figure out what had happened. He raised my blood pressure to see if that would cause the severe leak to resume, but it did not. I had a cardiac MRI about three months later, and it showed that my heart function has improved. There is nothing wrong that I can't live with, literally. No intervention is called for at this time. When I woke up after surgery and learned what had happened, I thought that I had a sense of how the people whom Jesus healed must have felt. Perhaps they thought, this really happened to me? I also thought about Lazarus. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus still at some point had to face death again. But that didn't change the fact that Jesus had worked a miracle in his life. In a similar way, I don't know what heart procedure might still await me. But that doesn't change the fact that God worked a miracle in my life that day. That was on July 25th. On August 7th, I got the call that confirmed that I had prostate cancer. The first plan called for surgery to remove the prostate, but the surgeon said that she was concerned that my lungs would make surgery very risky. So the plan shifted to radiation therapy which would require five to six weeks of five days per week treatments, 26 treatments in all. The surgeon told us that research shows that surgery and radiation have the same outcomes after 15 years, so they are equivalent procedures as far as outcomes are concerned. Since this is the case, the surgeon recommended that I receive radiation treatments. So on September 20th, I reported for the first of my radiation treatments. The two radiation therapists who served me just about every day were absolutely delightful. In fact, everyone who served us at Vanderbilt over these many months was absolutely top-notch. I can't say enough positive about them. With all of these appointments, tests, calls, and messages, managing my health became a part-time job. Every time I went in for anything, someone would ask for my birth date to make sure they were treating who they were supposed to be treating. I gave my birth date, 6-15-52, more times than I could count. The radiation therapists and I got into a daily race to see who could go first. Would she ask first, or would I just say it before she could ask? She usually won. Another blessing came our way when we learned that the American Cancer Society operates a Hope Lodge in Nashville for people undergoing cancer treatment at any of the hospitals in Nashville. The patient stays there along with a caregiver. To qualify to stay there, a patient has to live at least 40 miles away and have a caregiver always with him or her. The lodge is like a nice hotel, and everything is free. Each patient and caregiver is responsible for their own meals, but the lodge provides full kitchens for residents to use. And at least once a week, usually more often, an individual or a group brings in a meal for all the people staying there. Hope Lodge was a huge blessing for us. It's about 10 minutes from the cancer center at Vanderbilt. The staff at Hope Lodge is great. We got to know several other patients and caregivers who were staying there, and we all had sympathetic ears for each other's condition and treatment. We saw husbands and wives caring for each other, brothers caring for brothers, daughters caring for dads, and so forth. We rejoiced when someone completed treatment, and we agonized when a fellow patient had to be admitted to the hospital. It was impossible for me to feel sorry for myself while we were staying there because many others had cases that were worse than mine. People at Hope Lodge had positive attitudes when they could have been very bitter. 
Charlene and I felt blessed in many ways. There are about 30 Hope Lodge facilities in cities across the country. I finished my radiation treatments on October 26th. I am now in pulmonary rehab to help my lung function. Every pulmonary function test has been good, but the pulmonologist wants me to do all I can to strengthen my lungs. I also have follow-up visits with the cardiologist and the urology oncologist, and those follow-up visits are already being scheduled into next year. Only the Lord knows what else we might have before us, but I know He will see us through, just as He has seen us through all that we have faced this year. My list of reasons for being thankful is long. First, I must give profound and heartfelt thanks to my caregiver, Charlene. She has been a rock both in helping me and in encouraging me. I could not ask for a better helpmeet. I thank the other members of my family as well who have done so much to encourage me. I am absolutely amazed at all the people who have been praying for me. My fellow church members, friends in many places, Charlene's blog readers, and many others have been praying, and I know all of those prayers have made a difference. While the surgery team finished up my heart surgery, the cardiologist went to talk to my family about the amazing thing that had happened. He said that he didn't know what had happened. Charlene told him, I know what happened. It was the thousands of people who had been praying for Ray. She was right, and God answered those prayers. We were even able to finish the updated edition of our high school curriculum exploring government during the first two weeks of my cancer treatments, although others in the company did the lion's share of work on wrapping that up, particularly Charlene and our son John. We've had many unexpected reasons for thankfulness. If it had not been for the PET scan on my lungs, we would not have known about the prostate problem. I had no symptoms regarding that. If it had not been for Hope Lodge, we would have had to make our own arrangements for the weeks of radiation treatments, which would have been expensive, difficult, and lonely. If the heart surgeon and pulmonologist at Vanderbilt had not made sure my lungs were healthy, where might I be? I don't even want to think about it. And may I offer a word of exhortation. Guys, get your PSA checked every year and take it seriously because it is serious. As you can tell, it has been some kind of year for us. I haven't even mentioned the health issues that have come up for other members of our family this year. I am thankful for every single day. I might wish that this all never happened to me, but I have received many, many blessings through it all. I'm a richer man because of it. I'm letting a lot more stuff roll off my back, things that aren't really important. I have no doubt that God hears and God acts. I know even more surely that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. As a sweet caregiver at Hope Lodge said, I couldn't do it without my relationship with the Lord. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And be sure to thank the God who sustains us all. I know I certainly will. I'm Ray Notgrass, 6-15-52. Thank you for exploring the history of my year with me today. This has been Exploring History with Ray Notgrass, a production of Notgrass History. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app, and please leave a rating and review so that we can reach more people with our episodes. If you want to learn about new homeschool resources and opportunities from Notgrass History, you can sign up for our email newsletter at exploringhistorypodcast.com. This program was produced by me, Titus Anderson. Thanks for listening.